Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Digital Embellishment Show. I have a very special guest with us today. Uh, somebody coming from Tel Aviv, Israel. We have Shirley Koifman, uh, the head of HP Indigo's uh, Global Strategic Alliances. Shirley, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we had a great conversation uh, at DScoop this year where we kind of talked about uh, some of the really fun uh, and innovating things that you were doing. And I can't wait for the, the listeners uh, and, and viewers to, to get into that. But before we get into that, tell me just a little bit about yourself, Shirley. Who are you and where do you come from and, and how did you get to HP Indigo? So um, I um, got to HP Indigo directly from the public sector um, before coming um, to HP. I was uh, heading the, um, the, uh, the trade uh, mission and economic mission to, uh, to South China from Israel, of course. No and what we basically were doing is to help um, Israeli uh, startups, technologies, um, and businesses um, to find the right strategic uh, partnerships or the right, um, you know, the right market in the Chinese market, which is very, you know, huge companies, uh, huge corporates, always looking for innovations. And um, and this is, and I did it in many many different sectors so i have a very broad overview about not just you know a specific uh sector from ai to mobile to uh, to computers to just anything anything you can uh, think of medical devices wow. whatever um, and before that by the way i led a nationwide uh, um, training program um, for smbs and entrepreneurs so i'm really Every time I talk about this topic, about SMBs and about entrepreneurs, I really like talking about it. Well, well Shirley, I just launched my software company uh, a couple of weeks ago. Maybe I could get some tips from you after this. I'd love to. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> uh, thank you. So tell me, Shirley, you're, uh, you're in charge of global uh, strategic alliances for HP Indigo. What does that mean? I mean, it sounds, yeah. sounds impressive, but what, what exactly do you do? So of course, within HP, we have many, uh, many, uh, many kind of uh, departments and and partnerships and different kind of partnerships that facilitate the um, the print for our customers and the services. But what I do specifically is to try to tap into the new market, into the future market of print. Uh, we just want to show and. Uh, the world, what digital print can do, and we want to help the customers of our customers, basically. This is how we help our customers. We create these strategic um, alliances with platforms and with different kind of entities, which I will describe later, um, in order to help our customers to create a, a net new print growth. We want to, if you want, we want to make the cake larger. I don't know if that's a phrase. It does. Say. I love it. So, okay. So you're, I think it's called pull marketing. So you're actually going to your customer's customer to create mm -hmm. the demand uh, for what your customers can then create. I mean, if, if I'm an Indigo user, I must be super happy about this. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, I think that's super, uh, that's super. How, how's that going? Yeah, you know, it's it's going good because at the end of the day, we feel like, um, you know, owning a great press uh, like an HP Indigo is not enough. We right. need to help you. We share. We feel like we're almost business partners of our own customers. So we want to help them succeed. Of course, our customers, they do it great. The print service providers, the converters, they can um, very easily uh, find new customers of theirs. It's not it's their expertise, but we can help them with strategic things that only a global company like HP can do sometimes. And we want to help them with that. We want to bring them more opportunities. So I think that's uh, that's amazing that you're doing that. I think uh, the, the print industry as a whole uh, should be thankful that you're out there creating opportunities for print where there are none. Um, how, how are you seeing like the new generations uh, kind of reacting to print? I think a lot of people are kind of worried about uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand just, you know, how impactful print can be in these new generations. Is that like a challenge that you're trying to overcome or that you're running into? Yes. Tell me a little bit more about that. 
Yes, totally. It's something that I started um, looking um, and researching once I, I um, uh, started working at this position at HP Indigo. I mean, it seemed like uh, we're living in a very digital world. Everything is digital. The uh, generation, uh, the Zoomers generation, and of course, also the alpha generations, I'm going to talk about it. Um, they are all so much uh, about the digital sphere that maybe they won't like to have some print. And my answer for that is that um, it reminds me of a song, um, a song we're all familiar with. Um, the video killed the radio star. I wish we yeah. could uh, listen to it, but just to make it short, it basically talks about how, I mean, the old generation kind of fears, the old radio generation fears that this new technology that arrived, the video, is going to kill their, you know, their nostalgic radio time. Um, but the question is, did it really happen? I mean, the world uh, moves fast having that fear. We are now advanced way beyond video. We don't right. use videotapes anymore or DVDs. We, are, we use live streaming. And yet, it seems like the radio is the only thing that is there to stay. Right. Or the younger version, of course, the podcast. The, the podcast. Uh, our podcast, yeah. That's right. That's what we're doing. That's beautiful. That's uh, that's really really interesting. Yeah. And um, so uh, so the podcast, for example, the podcast that we have today, co still coexists uh, next to the radio, to the good good old radio. Yeah. Um, and people thought that the cinemas will be gone when Netflix arrived. And right. here we are, wanting to go to the cinema and have popcorn with other people not doing it at only at home, everything coexists together. So um, I think that brings me back to the point. Um, so when we talk about the future of print and whether print is really going to shrink or simply gone, the answer is no. We simply need to rebrand it and adjust it for the younger, younger generation uh, and to think from their perspective. No, oh, that's a so so. For example, give me an example, uh, Shirley. For for example, uh, you know how how do you rebrand print for Gen Z or Gen A uh, uh, out there? What what kind of what kind of initiatives? I don't know. Are you allowed to talk about some of the initiatives you're working on, or is it? Top yes, secret? I will. Uh, oh, yeah. So <laughs> some of our top secrets, but I am going to reveal today a few of them. Okay. Um, so stay tuned. Okay. Um, but the first step I'd like to to take our listeners um, or viewers in this case, um, I want them to think differently about their audiences because we need a, a, a mindset change in a way. And the first step is to take a look on the usual suspects of digital print. We're thinking about all these applications that are... Um, that are, you know, in print, we are thinking about the photo books, um, the yearbooks, etc. On the other hand, we have the SMBs and the handcrafters, um, now influencers that are producing their own, you know, their own uh, products, and, and they develop them and then sell them, maybe online, maybe directly. And they need flyers, brochure, packaging labels, many print needs. But we just need to stop looking at them as potential just customers um, they're not just individual customers or in the local community um, next to the print shop. And they're not just the SMBs just that, that resign next to our print shop. We have to start looking at them as users. Mm. And once we start looking at them as users, you know, I mentioned earlier that I was in charge of uh, entrepreneurs and SMBs training program, for example. And we used to tell them, you know, the business owner is the face of the business and sometimes it's this is the comparative advantage you have. I mean, how much you smile, how much you give good service to your customers. This all matters to SMBs. But now we have to transit this state of mind of, you know, a smiling face when you walk into a store, a print store, for example, and, you know, transit it to uh, a customer experience in the user interface in the yeah. digital sphere. So a friendly experience in the digital sphere will be, I, was, I would start, and this is my first tip today, I would start with how the website of the print service provider or converter looks like. A user-friendly experience will make the difference. And this is what I mean by starting to think about the audience as users, because then you can really tap into the solutions on how getting more, you know, more of these generations, these new generations. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it's uh, unfortunately, I feel that the biggest issue that most printers have is that they're not marketers, and and I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be at all. I think there's no pushback on that idea that printers are, are the worst at marketing themselves uh, to the new generation and the worst at marketing themselves, period. You know, they, 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 they live in marketing. They print brochures and, mm -hmm. and mailings and posters and all kinds of stuff for marketing, but they rarely really focus on themselves uh, and how to make that experience easier. Um, and I think that's definitely maybe changing because we're seeing a lot of millennials now taking over uh, print operations. They kind of grew up in that generational sphere where they l understand the the importance of internet and how to, to connect with clients. Is that something that you're starting to see at all? Or is, is the shift in yeah. leadership in the printers themselves, you know, to, to the new generation, is that helping? I think so. It helps. But my vision to and what I want for our um, you know, what our, our community of customers that are, we really want to help them and I don't think we should wait for the young generation to take over. Um, for the young generation, by the way, they already know this stuff exactly as you're saying. I want to help everyone. I want to tell them about it. I want to, you know, open their mind. And this is this is not something unique to uh, to the print world. What you mentioned about, you know, they deal with marketing, but they don't know how to do marketing themselves. It reminds me of a of an entrepreneur that I had in my in the uh, training program in my previous uh, roles, and she was I think she was like a CMO of a company. She was a marketing director in in a company. Uh, but when she started opening her own business, she couldn't market herself. This is a very, uh, it's like the imposter, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, illusion. Um, and that happens to many. But we need, to, we just need to control it. We just need to know what to do. And we can start with um, maybe some, something else I would like to bring on is that uh, maybe understanding better this young generation, this new consumer uh, of print generation. Um, Gen Zoomers, for example, that are usually um, born between 97 and 2011, and even the younger generation as the Generation Alpha, mm -hmm. uh, who were already born into, the, into this uh, smartphone technology. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if we understand now, as I mentioned earlier, how to hunt them, uh, as users in the online space, we can move on to how to lure them back into the physical space. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good point. That's a great point. So, uh, so Shirley, tell me, you you do strategic partnerships, meaning that I mean, in your title, it says that you run partnerships with other, I guess, brands uh, and companies uh, to help promote potentially uh, printed products. Um, what kind of, what kind of partners are you, are you working with? Can you talk about that? Is there, is there stuff yeah. that you're, you're working on or, uh, yes. that we... um, so the first thing I wanted to, um, to discuss again, so, so the analysis kind of started of, you know, where to find this, uh, these uh, new users and, uh, and of course to understand them better. And for example, for SMBs. We know that lots of SMBs today that are users are using um, online uh, services, you know, worldwide, uh, worldwide online services uh, through Fiverr. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, yeah, platform. Sure. Yeah, so they, they are, you know, they're like the Amazon of services in a way. For sure. Um, and they offer services from all over the world to all, all over the world. Um, and so we collaborated strategically with Fiverr in order to create a place where users could be uh, could find, sorry, A to Z services for their businesses or home through their solution marketplace. They could find the nearest print shop to order from without actually having to walk there. We're helping our network, our network of, of customers and printers um, to reach net new customers. Because until now, you could only order a service and the service is a design service, for example, a brochure, um, you know, a flyer, a packaging design, whatever it is, 
But then this person from, I don't know, from Israel who ordered a design from Bangladesh, now they have to, obviously the designer from Bangladesh, they don't know your nearest right. print shop, right? So it's a, it's a really win-win uh, for, you know, service for both of, of, uh, of these entities. And this is a, a great example of how we can create net new um, print customers for our um for our businesses wow that's smart and i think like um i'm kind of familiar with site flow uh from from uh, indigo and from hp and uh, i think that's a great platform to be able to roll this kind of stuff out right is that is that kind of part of right. the plan or so that's definitely part of the pr plan and i was getting there just to say i mean to do that and to yeah. be ready to do these kind of things um there there are two things that you have to consider first of all because we're thinking again as users right. and the users are um, completely um, spread and distributed and and uh, and um, all over the world and the users are also very um, used to buy cross-border and to and to do these kind of things we see it from the e-commerce platforms so again there are, I don't know how many um, you know um, how many companies out there can say that they have such a big install base of, right. you know, of machines everywhere in the world. And that's why it's a strategic alliance that, you know, that a company like HP with a brand name like HP can do. Um, because we can promise these platforms um, and these, you know, worldwide uh, user uh, friendly platforms that if you want, you can find, I mean, you have obviously users everywhere, so you can find the nearest print shop um, to your users at the end of the day. And this is something very unique to us. And SiteFlow is the second point. Um, SiteFlow and other partners that we partner with for the entire solution um, to automate the process of print. This is very important because obviously once you open up to users and to e-commerce platforms, you would need to have the solution that you know piles up the the different files. Um, and and again, if I if I have to go back to what else we can do in this uh, future market um, space and how we can tap into new markets, blue oceans, uh, net new uh, uh, consumers of print. Um, so I again, I started studying uh, this generation and there's an, an interesting uh, psychological research about, for example, receiving a digital uh, gift versus the experience of receiving a physical gift. Mm. Um, and this um, research was conducted on, on Gen Zers. And the conclusion was that, of course, they had many conclusions uh, y uh, and you could give a digital gift uh, if you thought of, about it and, um, and, and it means, uh, and it's personalized to the uh, gift receiver, but the tangible experience of unwrapping the gift is crucial to the experience, for example. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical gift, but the ceremony of receiving it must be physical. In our world, uh, that would mean that even by uh, changing it to a scratch of greeting card, a personalized one with a personalized message, and you just reveal your maybe digital gift, maybe it's a, um, I don't know, gift card, whatever it is, that those things still matters even to Generation Z. And if you look at the younger generation, the alpha generation, um, and they literally were born to the digital sphere, uh, for them, the digital sphere is too natural. They're looking for the physical experience as well. Um, so is that there's a nice case study of how um, Sephora, if you're familiar with this um, retail uh, cosmetics shop, um, and Sephora is winning with this demographic because they understood that they take all the areas that this demographic is showing interest in online, and like aesthetics and desire for particular products. And they created a, a really nice accessible physical shopping environment. But how they did it, they did it with insights from the online sphere. So they learned about this generation from the online, what they care about, what they like, and then they combined everything together into a physical experience. So we can do the same things with, uh, or we could offer the same things um, and same values from print because print is tangible. And, and an example like that could be the AI. We cannot have this podcast without saying anything about um, the, the AI um, revolution. 
Right. Um, so if we think about Gen Zers um, that again are very, or alpha generation that are very used to deal with AI for them, you know, it happened a few years ago, but for them, they're so young, it's, it's natural mm -hmm. for them now. So they don't want just to create beautiful AI artworks. Until now, they're using the AI to beautify their photos and post it on Instagram, for example, or they use it to make uh, beautiful creations and share it with their friends and online and in the online sphere. But what we wanted to do with them is to say, hey, I mean, you could have a physical experience with this digital AI creation, um, something you can touch. And we did. This is exactly another uh, example of a partnership of a collaboration that we did with, a, uh, with an AI smartphone uh, editing tool. And you're going to hear all about it in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we integrated between a full digital AI smartphone app and the ability to print the creation into basically anything you want. And we, we actually connected them to one of our customers. Um, you know, they chose it out of many. Um, and this is what this is what really means to be a customer of HP, to be a part of this community. Um, it, it means you get access to opportunities because right. again, as you said, we have the right tools for it. That's great. I, I you know, a big thing at Tactiful and one of the reasons that, you know, we created the company uh, is because we, we, we believe so much in the power of touch, of tactility, of the ability to uh, vehiculate whether it's subconscious or conscious messaging mm -hmm. uh, through the choice of paper. Uh, you look at greeting cards today, most of the greeting cards are on uncoated paper, for example. And the reason mm -hmm. why it's because uncoated is going to be warm to the touch. And when you're sending a greeting card to somebody, you want it to be emotional and you want it to be warm. And so that's mm -hmm. why you see it. If you look at most electronics, electronics are going to be usually on coated paper or a good lamination. Uh, gives you the ability to vehiculate, you know, advanced innovation. Um, um, these are all things that play really, I think, into the psychology of purchasing. The psychology of buying uh, is mm -hmm. how you interact with with products. And it's sure, uh, sure as you as you mentioned, you can't do so a lot of that stuff on a site, on a website, on a phone, on a computer. Mm -hmm. So I, it's, I, it's it's really true. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, go on. Um, it's it's so it, it's so accurate actually. Uh, by the way, I haven't mentioned that, but I am kind of interested in the psychological effects as well. I haven't mentioned I'm I have a bachelor in psychology as oh, well as well as the MBA. So I, I always connect the yeah. marketing and the business with the psych. I, I believe that business is psychology at the end of the day. It is and it marketing. Is. Yeah. And yeah. we know, for example, we know that in terms of the psychology of it or the effect that it has on consumers, if we are thinking about brands, for example, um, we found out that actually um, the most effective uh, media is the packaging. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so surprising, right? Because we live in the social media world and the digital ads, but actually packaging is more impactful than, um, let's say, uh, still ads, digital ads. Uh, the only thing that uh, is more impactful than uh, on a consumer than the packaging itself is um, is actually videos, Video. for example. Yeah. yeah, the video is very strong. But yeah. even then, I have to say, even then we have a solution. So, for example, I I, I could envision that we with our tool, with the HP tool, um, uh, we have a it's called a frames, and yeah. uh, it has the ability to separate um, an animation or a video and separate it automatically into different frames to create you know an animation out of print. No so kidding. I could completely imagine that connected connecting between the AI creations and the videos and the influencers market um, altogether it's only a matter of time where um, you know these children who are going to school they they would like to create their own personalized um, animation on their notebooks I, I think it's totally happened so it's That's not awesome. just a physical experience is the physical experience together with the personalization that really, really matter. It's not, it's not just a, a matter of it matters to Gen Z. Yeah. It's actually they um, they demand it. Right. They don't just like it's not it's not something small. Well, I think it was. Uh, I think I'm, I'm quoting the same study that you mentioned about the video. It's from the WARC, 
who said that packaging was the second most uh, important. Did you, and I don't know if you know this, but 62% uh, – if you touch a product in a store, you have a 62% higher chance of making an impulse purchase. So think about that wow. from a psychology standpoint. Uh, and you're willing to pay – on products that are under, I think, $40, 33% higher price if you've touched a product compared to if you haven't. Wow. So there's a lot of really good uh, work. Uh, you might want to look at Dr. Joanne Peck and uh, the work she's been doing at uh, the University of Wisconsin on the effects of haptics and touch on purchasing mm -hmm. and buying impulse. Um, and it's exactly what you're saying. Uh, and I thought it was really interesting, too, that I think it was like 50% of Gen Z uh, are expecting personalization in their products, but like Gen Gen Alpha was like something like I think I almost say seventy or seventy two percent. Yeah. So it's gonna get it's gonna get even more uh, more intense from a from a digital standpoint, from a, a digital print standpoint, to be able to personalize it's in the future. Must. No. Yeah, yeah, it's a must. And now that you mentioned sixty two percent in this research, by the way, I have I wasn't familiar with it. Um, I found another research saying that 62% uh, of Gen Zers, they express their willingness to engage with um, out-of-home displays, like posters outside. So again, they want this physical experience. They want it to be outside. They don't want everything to be in their computers. And yeah. once they have it in front of their eyes, in the physical sphere, it, it does something. So it's, it's not necessarily just the touch of it. It's also, it's all the senses all together when you it get is. to see something physical. Even, even the things you said about, you know, the greeting cards, it reminded me as a child, now a, a personal experience alert. As a child, um, I remember that we used to go to, um, there is, in Israel, there is a books fair every, every year. Yeah, I remember uh, a, a those. whole week. Yeah, a whole At week your school? of... Um, no, it's uh, oh. it's actually in the public uh, okay. areas. Every city has it until today, yeah. and there's a whole week of endless, endless. Um, you know, uh, it's like a market of books, and I like to go there and smell the books. Yeah. Like from a very young age, I I like to touch the book and smell the paper yeah. smell. And it, this yeah. this was very important for me. I don't know for other people, but um, so you definitely uh, <laughs> reminded me of this uh, nostalgic uh, experience. And I I believe that that's the same. The human brain hasn't changed much. No. Maybe the technology has changed, but the human brain stays the same for millions of years. Oh, so. for sure. H haptic ap exploration uh, is. I mean. I, I did a video where I went with my kids to the store and I just filmed my three-year-old. I was like, all right, you know, um, whenever I go on a trip, like a long trip, I come back and I take my kids out and go, okay, you get a toy or, you know, something that's like, I'm sorry, I've been gone for two weeks. Like I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make it up to you. So, uh, and I filmed them and, and you see my three-year-old, how he decides what toy to buy. He runs through the, the aisles and he's three years old. So he's not super tall. Uh, so first of all, all the toys that really speak to him are going to be at his eye level or lower. Right. And you look at how he just touches products and, it, and, and almost every box has a touch me, feel me, try me, pull me to try to get a child to really just to engage with that box or that packaging uh, to create that, that, that spark that once you touch the toy, this is what I want. And, and I think in Illinois um, here uh, in, in the U.S., they try to ban handing mm -hmm. people products if you're walking in front of the store because they called it unfair competition mm -hmm. because they knew if, if you handed a product to somebody, they had such a higher percentage chance of buying this stuff. So everything that you're saying and the, the effects of touch, the effects of interacting uh, and, yeah. and, and the human brain, I, I absolutely agree with you. And, and uh, just because it's a new generation, they have new technologies that you said doesn't mean that their brains – the, the brain chemistry yeah. has changed. And, and, you know, for example, you have this whole ceremony. I, I uh, talked uh, before that about the gift receivers, but uh, in translating it into Gen Z and Instagram and all these social medias. So we have videos created by these influencers of the yeah. unboxing experience, right? Oh, for sure. They, they get sponsors, uh, spo they get to do sponsorship for brands, but they have the unboxing ex experience and people watch these things because yeah. Because even longing to this physical experience, the unboxing, the surprise, the everything that the, these influencers say, 
about what they received. And this makes packaging, I, I really truly believe that we are going to see even mu much more, at least digital print. I'm not, I'm not sure about everything, but the digital yeah. print, because it's personalized, because it's not, it's, it doesn't even have to be uh, personalized. People want to feel that they're unique, especially these days when, you 100%. know, the education is different. 100%. So, um, so everyone wants to, wants to feel special. This is, uh, this is another thing and, and genuine. So even we have another software, by the way, that we could create, for example, endless iteration, endless designs. Mosaic. Out of a, a mosaic, exactly. Yeah. Mosaic, out of one single um, seed file. Yeah. So imagine what that could mean to yeah. this uh, unboxing experience where each of the influencers is getting a, comp or, or just users is getting a complete different box. For sure. Um, so we could do so many things with print. This is the way that, you know, we keep print relevant in this, in this world. I agree. And I haven't I agree. even, yeah, sorry. No, you haven't even what? I feel like you had some something to say there. No, I haven't even started talking about, you know, the sustainability issues, that this is why people raised kind of the worry right. that maybe uh, through reducing packaging, through reducing print, no, uh, less brochures, less everything. So I do feel that this sustainability, um, you know, um, tendency, which is good, by the way, is going to maybe reduce a little bit the amount of print, but is just going to bring the print into va more valuable value. I mean, consumer. Yeah. So the value is going to change. You're going to want something personalized again. You're going to want something that, you know, a package is not going to be just a package. It's, it needs to be a connected packaging, for example, uh, that brings you back to the digital sphere or con interacts with you. Whatever it is, it just has to have more value. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to reduce the, you know, the whole. So you're speaking my language here. Uh, we saw this during COVID. Uh, so what happened during COVID is paper scarcity went through the roof. Uh, so impossible for printers to find paper impossible for people to print their packaging and what it ended up doing is kind of helped refocus the lens on print as being a luxury product not necessarily a commodity product because it was so hard to get something printed and i think now that the paper prices keep going up if somebody's going to get something printed they're going to think twice about mm -hmm. how do they bring the most value out of that print and that's where where a lot of the stuff that I do with the embellishments, with the varnishes and the foils and the being able to make it pop. Because if I'm going to spend a dollar on a box, well, I might as well spend a dollar 10 or dollar 20 to make it look phenomenal because that's where the value is coming back into print. And I agree with what you're saying is um, that's, that's, that's the opportunity, I think, in the printing the industry and in the future print is to make it almost a, a value product, not a commoditized product uh, in the future. Every, and, remember, every threat is always an opportunity. an opportunity. And in this case, if we do it right, and this brings me back to the partnerships and to this collaboration that we do. I mean, for example, these AI platforms, the, the yeah. creations, the, the, the technology that is allowing us to, to express people's own creations, even if they're not painters or photographers or yeah. anything like that. And this, imagine this would allow them to bring their creations to life, yeah. uh, to tangible things. These things are priceless for them. Yeah. Yeah. These things have like endless values for them because they created their own creation. And this is why it's not so relevant anymore. You know, the price competition, the, the, but no, what, what matters is the value. If the price is going up, then the value must go up as well, as you mentioned. A hundred percent. Actually, that's one of the softwares that we built was exactly for that because the value was going up, but a lot of the printers didn't realize where the value was. So there were, they were leaving so much money on the table because they were really undercharging it, not getting what they could good they can get for it. So, um, yeah, I uh, I actually I fully agree with with what you're saying. Um, Shirley, where do we go from here? Where's uh, what's the future? What does printing look like uh, in the future for you? What's the any any parting thoughts on on if you had a magic wand, what could printers be doing better to to prepare for the future? So first of all, um, automating automation is a key um, because of the reasons I, I've mentioned earlier. If we want to tap into these new markets, if we want to be a part of this cake of mm. the users, 
we have to think like users and these users they want they don't want to have to go i didn't give this example but imagine you can have everything in the in the tap of your finger but then once you click on a print shop uh website um it says like call me or mm. you know or you know just you just just leave your details and we'll get back to you so again this this is not easy for them uh, we lost them so the first tip again uh, is to have an uh, an integrated e-commerce um, shop that allows you to kind of um, um, to 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 get the print uh, uh, directly to the customers. Mm. And the second part will be the future will be that everything needs we we need to work in collaboration with other printers out there. I know that many people they don't like this idea, but at the end of the work, at the sorry, at the end of the day, um, because the world is globalized and 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 you you have to work in collaboration because from users you might be getting something that is not relevant to your area and you would like to, you know, reduce the carbon footprint and everything. So you need a colleague another print service provider, for example, to submit this, uh, these works to, um, to the right place. For sure. Uh, we, saw, we, we saw that at that, that D scoop, you know, people are willing to, to put on the, the collaboration hat, uh, if it's mm -hmm. win, win. And, uh, if, if, if I could look good to my customer by sending you work, then let's do it. Um, and I think, uh, I think that's what, what's so great about a community like DScoop is people are able to do that and, and create those partnerships together. And the most um, important thing, sorry, starts simply by, you know, putting yourself in the, in the, you know, in the, I don't know how to, in the eyes of the future consumers, as we said, sure. like the, the, the new generations to think yeah. like them. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't even realize that the print industry plants way more trees than it cuts. Uh, and, and I think that kind of stuff needs to get out to, to the younger generations. So they understand. Um, all right. Well, listen, Shirley Koifman, uh, from HP helping us brand the future of print with the next generations. Thank you for all of the work that you're doing to, to help the industry. Thank you for uh, creating these innovative new spaces that everybody's going to be able to, uh, to benefit from, uh, and making, as you said, the cake much larger for, for the print industry as a whole. Thank you so um, much for having me and giving me this space. Absolutely. If you want, uh, I definitely recommend uh, following Shirley on LinkedIn uh, and we will see you next time. Thanks everybody. Mm -hmm.